Okay, this video uh, I'm just going to provide a couple of demonstrations of one-way ANOVA using SPSS. Um, I'm using version 25 and uh, what I'm going to mainly be emphasizing is showing you how to obtain uh, one-way ANOVA results by going through the compare means one-way ANOVA option. So uh, with this particular data set right here we've got instructional method. It's a categorical uh, independent variable the basically three levels and uh, learning this is um, essentially uh, a continuous dependent measure that I'm uh, working from. And so what I want to do is to test whether there are significant differences in the means for instructional learning based on instructional method. So to carry out the analysis of variance what I will do is I'm going to go to analyze compare means and then go down to one way ANOVA and uh, I will put in uh, the independent variable method into the factor box, the dependent variable learning into the dependent list box. Uh, under options, when I click on it, I can click on descriptives. Uh, I'll ask for homogeneity of variance test because uh, one of the assumptions of uh, parametric ANOVA is uh, homogeneity of variances um, for your groups. Uh, I will also ask for a means plot and then on the off chance that uh, there's evidence of a violation of homogeneity of variance, I can also uh, uh, click on these two tests right here. These are robust tests uh, that essentially allow us to test for overall uh, group differences, but um, without have, with the requirement of homogeneity of variances necessary um, for the test. So I'm going to click on continue, and under post hoc, if I want to explore possible mean differences, um, if the parametric ANOVA is uh, indicating statistical significance, and I may want to explore where those differences might lie, so I can click on two key, and this test assumes equal variances. So uh, we're going to click on two keys uh, test right here, and if it were the case that the um, uh, that uh, the homogeneity variance assumption wasn't met, then rather than interpreting two keys, I might choose to interpret either uh, Tamani's t uh, square. Or games how so both of these function very similarly, but uh, these are alternatives. Um, in the if it happens to be the case that uh, we cannot assume equal variances, so next I'm going to click on continue and then on OK. And now when I look at my output, you'll see that I get my uh, descriptive statistics. We have the means, uh, standard deviations for my three groups. You'll notice that the test of homogeneity of variances, uh, there are several versions of Levine's tests. Um, and so what we're doing is we're testing whether, uh, basically testing against a null hypothesis uh, that the variances are equal. So if uh, Levine's test indicates statistical significance, it actually is, um, is taken to uh, mean that uh, there are significant uh, differences in the variances across groups, and that would reflect a violation of the homogeneity of variance assumption. Um, in previous versions of SPSS, we only had uh, this version of Levine's test. Now it looks like there are four versions in version 25. So just to remain consistent with previous editions, I'm going to interpret this Levine's test right here. And you can see that our p-value is 0.975. So um, if we pit that against a standard 0.05 uh, alpha level, you can see that uh, the p-value is greater than alpha. And so that means that we would maintain the null hypothesis that we have equal uh, variances across our groups and that's actually a good thing because that signals that um, our assumption is met. So um, given that then I will interpret the ANOVA summary table right here. So these, so we're test using these results to interpret the mean differences. If it was a case that I was inferring that um, that there were unequal variances then uh, I'm, I may not want to interpret this table right here, but rather move down and interpret the robust test of equality of means. But given that our assumption is met, we're going to uh, interpret this table right here. So what we see is that um, our F value, there's our F value and P value for this. And what we're testing is um, the, the, you know, the null hypothesis is that the population means for the three groups there are all equal. The alternative or the research hypothesis is that the population means are unequal. So if this um, uh, is indicating statistical significance, and we'll stick with a conventional alpha at 0 0.05, 
then we would reject the null and infer that there are significant population mean differences. So clearly, right here, we are going to infer that there are significant population mean differences um, in terms of uh, learning. So given that, uh, what I'll do is I'll scroll down and go to my multiple comparisons. And because our assumption of homogeneity of variances appears, is met, or appears to be met, um, I'm going to interpret Tukey's test as opposed to uh, relying on uh, Tamani's and uh, Games Howell test. So I'm not going to bother with that. So uh, the post hoc tests are basically a way of exploring possible mean differences. So um, you don't have any a priori hypotheses in mind. All you do is you're, you're just kind of going through and testing pairwise differences between the two groups. So uh, in this case we have method one versus method two. The mean difference is just computed by taking the mean for method one, subtracting the mean for method two, and so you can see it's negative 3.2, meaning that uh, the mean for uh, method one is actually 3.2 points lower on our, uh, than the mean for um, uh, method two. And here's our p-value, and it's indicating statistical significance. So in other words, we would interpret this uh, difference to mean that there are significant uh, uh, population differences between the two groups or there's a significant population difference between the groups. Then I'll compare one versus three. And so in this case, the mean for group one is 2.2 points uh, lower than the mean for group two, but this difference would not be significant at the conventional 0 0.05 level. Down here, you can see that we have group three, uh, excuse me, um, let me actually, I'll just keep it a little easier right here. We'll just say two versus three right here. And you can see that the mean difference is one, meaning that uh, the, the mean uh, level of learning in group two was one point higher than the mean for uh, group three. And that difference was not statistically significant. Now you'll also see that we have uh, a two versus one right here, a three versus one, and a three versus two right here. And these are just repeats of the, um, uh, the three tests uh, carried out above. So this test uh, right here, this test comparing these two groups, and um, you know this test right here comparing groups two and three. So there's no need to keep uh, repeating uh, in terms of uh, interpreting those results. When I scroll down, you can see that we have a means plot and uh, this is uh, just the, the plot of the individual means and so that just kind of gives you an idea that uh, the mean for group one was uh, you know less than that for group two and, and three. So that is um, the first demonstration, and you know, with this demonstration, we were just basically utilizing uh, post hoc tests uh, as a follow up to the significant and ANOVA. Um, if we had um, specific um, uh, contrasts that we wanted to test, um, like if we had certain theoretical expectations about certain uh, mean differences, then we might utilize planned contrasts instead of post hoc tests. Um, and basically what you would use in that case are uh, contrast coefficients. So where that would uh, come into play is basically um, let's say that I wanted to just test the difference between method one and method three right here. Well we would use contrast coefficients to test that difference out. Um, and so just to kind of provide a short demonstration we would just go to uh, one way and over right here and basically instead of using the post hoc option uh, which we had before, we would just be using uh, contrast. And so we would uh, specify the comparison. So for instance, if I want to compare group one versus group three, uh, I would use a contrast coefficient of one, click add, uh, zero, click add, and then a negative one, and click add. And so basically the contrast coefficients are essentially being multiplied by the group means and then we're adding up those products and that's going to produce the comparison. So like um, if we think about it in terms of um, you know group differences right here, this is my contrast. Um, essentially I have coefficient one being multiplied by the mean for group one plus coefficient two times the mean for group two uh, plus coefficient three times the mean for group three uh, if I substitute the one in for this, I get uh, the mean for group one. If I substitute uh, zero in for the second uh, coefficient here, that gives me zero. And then if I substitute the negative one for this coefficient right here, that gets me uh, minus the, the third group mean. So that would be essentially the mean for one minus the mean for group three. 
So um, this is an example of a simple contrast. We could also theoretically compute uh, the average of the first two group means and uh, compare that average against the mean for the, the, the um, third one uh, by doing the following. I can click on next and I'll type in uh, 0.5 add 0.5 add and then negative 1 add and uh, that would be the same as comparing the average of the means for groups 1 and 2 versus the mean for group 3. Just keep in mind that the contrast coefficients need to sum to 0. So I'll show you what this looks like uh, just by clicking on continue and then on OK. And so now you see that uh, you know our descriptors are the same, the homogeneity variance test is the same, ANOVA test, there's a robust test. And then down here where it says contrast coefficients, this is laying out the contrast that I was uh, carrying out. So you can see that the first contrast is a contrast of, of uh, group 1 versus 3. The second contrast is a contrast between the average of the means for groups 1 and 2 versus 3. So with the contrast test, these are basically um, t-tests. So you've got uh, two options, assume equal variances and does not assume equal variances. Uh, given that it, uh, our Levine's test is suggesting that we have equal variances, I'm going to stick with interpreting these results. So you can see for the first contrast, it's a comparison of group 1 versus 3. The mean difference is, is uh, minus 2.2, meaning that if I took the mean for group 1, subtract the mean for group 3, the difference is uh, uh, 2.2. So uh, group 1 scored 2.2 uh, points lower than uh, group um, 3. And when we have the test for the difference, uh, you can see there's our p-value and there's a significant difference between uh, those two groups. Uh, when we compare um, the average of the means for groups 1 and 2 versus uh, the mean for the group 3, the uh, value of the contrast is negative 0.6. So if I take the average of groups 1 and 2 and subtract the, uh, that average, or subtract the mean for group 3 from that average, the difference is only 0.6. Um, where basically um, the average is about 0.6 points lower than uh, the mean for group 3 and there's no difference between uh, uh, the groups. So that's the second plan contrast. Now next I'm going to show you um, an ANOVA and with um, where we have a violation of homogeneity of variances and give you an idea about some decisions that you can make there. So in this case um, I just have a nondescript group variable and a dependent variable. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go back to analyze compare means one way ANOVA and I'll put group in the uh, factor box, the dependent variable in the dependent list. For uh, options we'll click on descriptive, um, fix, uh, we'll click on um, homogeneity of variance test. We'll go ahead and click on Brown, Forsyth, and Welch on, on the possibility that you know if we have a violation of homogeneity of variance we might want to interpret those and our means plot. Under post hocs I'll just go back and click on two keys and Tamani's and Games Howell. So what I'm basically illustrating is is that um, you know that that if it turns out that we have a violation of homogeneity of variance, then uh, we would probably want to go back and you know l interpret these results as opposed to the standard parametric ANOVA and then use Tamani's uh, and uh, Games Howell uh, post or or Games Howell postdoc test to interpret uh, the results. If there's no violation, then we would interpret the uh, standard ANOVA, and then we would just use two keys. So uh, for this demonstration, I'll just uh, click on OK. And now when we look at our output, uh, in this case, you can see that you know, there are our cell means right there. Uh, and you can see that with uh, Levine's test, you can see that uh, p-value is 0 0.04. That would be some evidence that we have um, a violation of homogeneity of variance. So, uh, and, and the likely effect in this particular demonstration uh, is actually that it made the ANOVA more conservative than it needed to be. And so you can see um, uh, if we uh, are utilizing these results, there's no statistical significance. Um, and, and so if we utilize these results, we would in, end up inferring that there are no differences in uh, population means. But because we had the violation and it made this test uh, overly conservative, um, you know, we can use these tests instead um, that, that should be more uh, robust to that violation. That's why it's called a robust test. So you have the Welch test and Brown Forsyth. Uh, you know, you can see right here, both of these are indicating statistical significance. So 
Um, that's the reason why, you know, if we violate the assumption, we, we uh, consider, you know, not uh, interpreting the uh, ANOVA and, and then go to the robust test. So following that, uh, if I look at the post hoc test, and I would not want to interpret two keys because two keys assumes equal variances. So we have Tamani's and uh, Games Howell tests. Uh, these are, like I said, these are going to function very, very similarly. So I'm just going to actually uh, interpret uh, Tamani's test right here. So you can see uh, the difference between groups one and two. Uh, group one, uh, you know, uh, uh, individuals in that group scored uh, 2.3 uh, three points higher on average than those in group two. The difference is statistically significant. When we have uh, one versus uh, three, you can see that that difference is not significant. And then when you have group two versus three, you can see that that difference is not significant as well. So there was only one significant uh, difference that we observed. Um, again, if it turned out that it was the case that we wanted to run plan contrast, we could certainly uh, do that. Uh, and uh, just to kind of give another uh, demonstration, uh, in this particular case, I'll, uh, I'm just going to click off of the post hocs uh, and uh, go to contrast. And so let's say I've got three groups in this demonstration. So I'll just do group one versus uh, group two. So I'll put a negative one for group two and uh, zero for group three for the third contrast coefficient. Click on continue and on OK. And so now as we scroll down, you can see uh, there's our contrast coefficients right here, group one versus group two, and uh, contrast coefficient of three uh, for group three is zero. Um, and so in this case, rather than assuming equal variances, uh, we are going to uh, not assume equal variances. And so you can see there's the value of the contrast and the significance test. So uh, that concludes this demonstration of analysis of variance and um, a one-way ANOVA followed by uh, either uh, post, you know, post hoc tests or using plan contrasts.